Hello everyone. My name is Bhargavi and I'll be taking you through the webinar that we have today, which is on Tableau charts and graphs. Now, uh, the overall course, how is it structured for Tableau is, first we look at the, it is divided into 12 modules in total. Okay. Three hours per module, that makes it 36 hours duration. Module one would be introduction to Tableau and to a tool called as Tableau Prep Builder which is a tool that is used to prepare the data for analysis. Then we have connecting to various data sources from Tableau desktop. Then comes basic visual analytics, where we learn some basic graphs in Tableau, then calculations. After that, we will be looking at advanced visual analytics, the analytical capabilities like from Tableau, using Tableau, you can do prediction, you can do forecasting, you can do clustering. So these kind of things. Then level of detail expressions. This also is a type of calculation only, but is a special type of calculation, which is slightly complex. So we will cover that in module six. Then there is geographic visualizations, advanced charts, dashboards, and get industry ready, where you will be given access to some industry grade project will be there. There will be some tips and tricks that we can use on Tableau. There will be some interview questions that to which you will get access and all that in this module. Then there is module 11, where we talk about Tableau online. And module 12, there is a small project that we will be working upon. Okay, so that is the agenda. Now, coming to today's course, to begin with today's topics, what is Tableau? Tableau is basically a tool, a data visualization software. It comes under SSBI, Self-Service Business Intelligence Platform. It is a highly interactive tool, which is used to represent the data in a graphical format, primarily a visualization tool. Okay. Now, this is the architecture of Tableau. So from Tableau, let's say this person here is working on Tableau. From Tableau, we can connect to different data sources using live option where we make a direct connection or we could fetch the data and keep it somewhere on our local machine and use it and create graphs. Now, after creating the graphs, we can share it with the end users in different formats. Okay, you can send it to them as a workbook. You can share your work with other people in, in PDF format, in PowerPoint format as images. Okay, through Excel sheets also, we can share our data. Then we can publish our work to Tableau server. From there, other people can log into the server and they can access the information that is present over there. Okay. So from Tableau desktop, we connect to different sources. After that, we create reports. Once we have created the reports, we will publish it to the server for the end users to access the information in those reports. This is the overall architecture. Okay. Now coming to the features of Tableau, there are a lot of capabilities that it has. Most significant is amazing data visualization. It can create, using Tableau, we can create a variety of charts. Tableau has a huge community, rich online community is there and also customer support, both these go together. And if you are stuck at any point, you need some uh, doubt clarification and all, you can just post the question on Tableau online community and you can get an answer for that. Okay, easy implementation of the tool. Uh, it can integrate, help you integrate to a wide variety of data sources. Tableau mobile app is also available using which you can access the reports on the go from your mobile phone. And there's a rich online community who are always ready to help each other. Now there is something called as generated fields in Tableau. When we get connected to the data that is present in our data source to create different charts in Tableau, Fields from the data source will be accessible, that no doubt about it. However, there will be some additional fields which Tableau provides, which are referred to as generated fields. One is measure names. Measure names is a generated field that holds the names of different measures. Okay, measure names is a generated field that contains the names of various measures that are present in the data source. I will show you its purpose and how it helps us in real time. There is measure values, which will contain information about the data present in each and every measure. 
okay it contains the values the actual numericals it will have number of records so this is an automatically generated field again which will show us or help us understand the total number of records that are present in that data connection okay total number of records present in the data connection then latitudes and longitudes for various various geographical fields okay when you have to represent your data on a geographical map geographical data you need to know the coordinates the latitudes and longitudes in order to plot them on the map and that we can uh, those coordinates are also available internally in tableau which is basically the latitude generated and the longitude generated fields okay so these are five actually measure names measure values number of records then latitude and then longitude so you can say four and five now let's get into the hands on part where we'll see how to create different graphs so here is a simple bar graph that can compare data across different categories so in tableau first thing is we need to connect to the data i'm connected to one particular data source called as sample super store this comes inbuilt in tableau and it's also easily available on the internet if you just go do a google search for sample super store excel file okay just sample super store if you do a search for it this link the on the community community.tableau.com and you can see the link right here itself you will find super store which you can download now coming here see i'm connected to the data and what are the fields present in my data connection let me show it to you we have category city country okay customer id customer name order date so on and so forth we have a lot of data okay and the numericals like what is the discount offered how much profit was made quantity of products sold selling price all this information is there now apart from the fields coming from our data connection you will see five additional fields which come with this italic font you can see they are coming with an italic font right slanting these are generated fields measure names it contains the names of the measures measure values latitude here down here count count is nothing but the number of records in that connection latitude field and longitude field okay these five are called as generated fields these five are given to us by tableau even though they are not present in the actual data source they are provided to us by tableau okay so if i take measure names there's nothing that will happen because stand alone by itself this field doesn't have any significance only when it is used in combination with measure values so you see each and every measure discount profit quantity sales and count they are coming as a row here okay measure names is on the rows shelf so this is arranged by rows and measure values in the text shelf you can see how it is arranged as text you can see the numericals right you can see the data present in that field so overall total number of records we have 9994 uh, total profit made by the business total quantity of products sold total sales made by the business understood so that is measure names and values and this is a simple text table okay now let us look at our bar graph the first graph in our hands on across different categories i am supposed to show the profit okay so i took pro category to the columns shelf this here is called columns shelf and when you take something to columns shelf data from that field will get arranged as columns furniture is a column office supplies is a column technology is a column and i will take profit to the rows this gives me a bar graph profit being on the rows shelf forms y axis cutting across rows you see 40k 60k 80k 100k it is cutting across rows and why should we use a bar graph and when should we use it for categorical comparison of data so relative comparison i can see that technology is making the highest profit and furniture has the least profit okay so you can do a quick comparison when you create a bar graph like that let's look at next one line chart it is used for comparing 
the data over different periods of time. So when we say line charts, line charts are used when you have time series data and over a period of time when you have to check the performance of the business. So when I take order date here, it is rolled up by year and let's say I'm looking at the profit. So year over year, what is the profit that this business is making is what we can understand. So year over year, we can see that the profit is steadily increasing. There is an upward, there is an upward trend in the profit made by the business. Now, by clicking on the plus sign, we can drill down and even look at this information by quarter, further drill down to month level, remove some level which is not required, okay, directly year and month. So like that, you can create the chart. The next chart we have here is Pareto chart. Pareto is a combination of a line graph and a bar graph. And it is based on the Pareto principle. Pareto principle says that by putting very little, by, by focusing on the significant few members, we can generate a very, make a big difference. It is called as the 80-20 rule. By putting 20% of the effort, we can get 80% of the benefit of doing the entire job. Then all of us will do only 20% work, expect 80% in return, right? So it's not randomly any 20% activities that we perform. The most significant activities you have to choose and perform. Okay. The most significant 20% activities when we take and we perform those activities, it will lead to 80% of the benefit. So over here, suppose I want to identify which subcategories contribution towards the sales is the highest. Okay. Which all subcategories are giving Superstore 80% of its sales. So I will have to sort the data in descending order. Why descending order? Because our focus is on high performers, very, very high contributors, significantly impacting the output. Okay. And this is built on the running total of the field. So I'm going to add a table calculation running total and express that as percentages. Okay, so here is the line chart which is indicating the running total. Now, how do we read or understand this graph? 14% of the entire sales made by the business is by phones alone, by selling phones. 14% of the total sales is coming from phones. 28% of the total sales is coming from phones and chairs both put together. Phones and chairs collectively are giving it 28% of the overall sales. Phones, chairs and storage, just three members, only three out of overall 17, just three members are giving Superstore, are contributing to almost 40% of its entire sales. So someday if we stop selling phones, chairs and storage, 40% of the sales will you know, go away. We will lose 40% of our market share. These are the significant few members whose impact will be the most. So if I stop selling, let's say, look at this. After supplies, art. From 97, it's 98. Means what? Just about 1% is the contribution. Over here, much less, much less, even more less. So if we stop selling all of these items, if I stop selling supplies, art, envelopes, labels, fasteners, nothing will happen. Maximum three, not even three. 2.5% of my market share I will lose. At most, 2.5% of my market share I will use if I stop selling all of these items. But if I stop selling these three items, 40% of the market share I will lose. Getting it? So these are those significant few members whose contribution is very high. These are the trivial many. Okay, significant few but the trivial many, they are so trivial, even if you stop selling them, your business will not be take a huge blow as such. It will be okay. Okay. Now for a Pareto chart, we should also show the actual contribution. So I'm bringing in sales again. <coughs> and we'll merge these graphs with dual axis concept. Make this a bar. Reduce the size a little bit. So this is what a Pareto will look like, okay? Line will indicate the cumulative total 
and bars are indicating the actual performance. In, in numericals, what is the sales from phones? What is the actual sales of chairs, of, of storage, of tables, so on and so forth? Okay, Pareto. Next is a bullet graph. Bullet graph can be used as a gauge to show the performance of measures. It can show whether or not a business has met the target given to it. Target is represented as a reference line. You see this line here? That is the target or the goal. And the actual performance is indicated with this blue colored bar. Now, will it go and hit the target? Will it be able to reach the target or did it not reach the target or did it go beyond the target is what we will be able to see. Okay. For this, I'll use a different data. Okay. So there are different products and each of these products are making some profit. Okay. And this is a bullet graph. Okay. Each of these products are making some profit. So this is profit here, means the blue colored bar is indicating the actual profit made by the business. And this black colored lines that you see, these lines are indicating the target. Okay, they are indicating the target. Now, how do we read or interpret this graph? So we can understand that this product could not reach the target. The target given to it is 7,020 and it could not reach the target as you see. It failed to reach the target, but we can see one dark gray and one light gray shade, right? So this is 80% of the target value. And this side is 60% of the target value. Was it able to achieve at least 60% of the expected value? Yes. It went above the 60% mark. Was it able to reach 80% of the expected value? No, it could not reach 80% of the expectation. So forget reaching the goal, it could not reach even the 80% mark. That is our conclusion. We can say that this product could not reach 80% of the expected value. It went beyond 60%. It could not reach 80%. Forget about the goal. It never reached the goal. It missed the target. It missed the target. Now, if you look at this product, it went above the 60% mark. It went above the 80% mark also but it failed to reach the goal by a small margin. So it's doing well, 80% of the expectation it reached. Unlike Amarito, it could not reach even 80% of the expectation, right? This managed, but it missed the target by a small margin. Okay, if you look at Earl Grey, it has gone beyond the target. Its performance is really good. It has gone beyond the target. Lemon also has gone beyond the target. Mint again went beyond the 60% mark went beyond the 80% mark, but it failed to reach the target. It missed the target by a small margin. Okay, so bullet graph will help you understand that, whether or not we have met the target that is given to us. The next chart is a simple text table. When actual values are more important, when it's more important to display the actual data, rather than doing a quick comparison through a bar graph or checking the trend through a line chart, or doing Pareto analysis, identifying the significant, you know, few members whose impact is much, or to see whether we have met the target or not through a bullet graph. Text tables are when you have to simply represent the values as is. Okay. When you're more interested in showing the values, showing the data as is, you can go with text table. So creating a text table is pretty simple. First, you design the structure. Let's say across different years for various subcategories, I would like to check the profit. So here is the structure of my table where the years are arranged as columns, subcategories are arranged as rows and I'll take profit into the text shell. Okay, with profit in the text shell, you can see how the graph has taken a shape. You can see the numericals, right? That's it, that is the text table where we are representing the actual numbers rather than a quick comparison, okay? Now on top of this, if we want, we can also add color to it, okay? We can go and take profit into the color shelf 
and they are colored based on the profit. You can see orange color is given to all the members making a loss. Blue shades means profits. If I change the mark type to square here, you will get a highlight table. Okay, so this is where we are not just showing the values, but we are also including color to help people understand where the numbers are high and which all numbers are low, where we have loss, where we have profit, most profitable one is here. So we're indicating that very clearly by this chart. Okay, that is a text table. Now, the next chart is a heat map, which is more or less like your text table only. But rather than showing the data by putting the numbers in there, we will indicate it through a square. So I will do the same thing, okay? Order date and then subcategory. And I'm showing the profit. I'll just take it to detail, okay? Provide the information. Uh, <clears throat> or one minute, one moment. I'll use the mark type as square. So look at this. We are indicating each and every data point with a square. So this is accessories 2014, 15, 16, 17. This is labels 2014, 15, 16, 17, right? Now I'll take profit into the size shell. Sorry, into color shell. Okay. And I'll take sales into the size shell. Now look at this graph. We are indicating two measures here. We are indicating two measures here. Rather than showing the numbers, we are indicating everything simply with the square. So the size of the square, size is this, is indic indicating sales. Wherever you see big squares, it is high sales. Wherever you're seeing small squares, it is extremely little sales happening. Here you see, very little. Where, and what about the color? Profit. So wherever you see blue color, it is profit. Wherever you see orange, it is loss. Darker shade of blue means high profit. Lighter shades of blue, less profit. Orange, loss. Okay, just a moment. Okay, I hope whatever we have discussed till now is clear. This is a heat map where we are not showing the numbers, the numericals, but we are simply indicating our data with the square. Okay, controlling the size of the square and also the color of the square. Next is a waterfall chart. It is used to visualize the cumulative effect of a measure over dimension. So basically what it will try to convey is how are different members contributing towards the value of that measure? Whether their contribution is positive or whether their contribution is negative and by how much value and by how much value, okay? So individual contribution is this bar, but cumulative. Okay, cumulative contribution is coming like that. For example, see, this is the contribution of accessories towards the profit till here. Okay, this much is the contribution of accessories till here. Then arts individual contribution is much lesser compared to that. But we are not indicating art over here as another bar. Okay, we are not indicating each thing as a bar like this, not a simple bar graph like this, no. If till here it is, um, let's say accessories, from there on appliances. So both of them together, this much. Understood. Then art comes with its contribution, small contribution, pushing up the overall till here. So individual contribution of art is this much, but all three of them together is this much. Okay. Then we are not starting binders from the bottom here, from here, no. If till here is the contribution of the three members, then on top of that, how much is the contribution of binders? Pushing the overall to this value. Then you can see it went down because that's a negative contribution. Something is contributing in a negative way. So it's coming down like that. Okay, so together, together, these two, how much? These three, how much? These four, how much? So each one comes and how it is pushing up the bar. Each individual bar, we are not representing with respect to zero on the axis like this. No. Whatever was the overall contribution till the previous member, on top of that, the contribution of this particular member. This much is the contribution of all of these members. Then on top of that, the new member, how much? Okay. So step by step, we are showing how each member is coming, further taking it up, the profit, further improving or decreasing or improving. Okay. This is a slightly tricky chart. 
to understand and also to create. So these are different subcategories and this is the profit. This is how they are contributing. Accessories contribution is around 42,000. Appliances is 18. Then, so what is happening? Each of these bars are indicating their contribution. So this here is zero, right? This is the zero axis, uh, zero line on the axis. This much is accessories, this much is appliances, this much is art, this much is binders. And uh, we have a negative contribution from bookcases, so on and so forth. But with water, what, what, waterfall, what will happen is, this is accessories, isn't it? Appliances will come here. What, another 18,000. From here, it will go up. Understood? Then art. So till here, it is accessories and appliances. On top of that, art. So overall pushes up till here. On top of that, binders. Understood? Then overall goes up there. Then it will reduce a little because of the loss. So these steps, these steps are uh, what we will get when we do a waterfall chart. So for this, first of all, we have to use running total, cumulative total. And then mark type will be a GAN bar. I'll have to create a negative counterpart of this field. <clears throat> okay, and that I will take it into the size shape. You see, like that. Look at the way it is getting sized. Look at that, like that. Okay, so this is a waterfall chart. I hope it's clear. Gantt chart. Gantt is used when we have to show a plan. Okay, Gantt is basically a project plan. Okay. Now, let's say you're working on a project or your team has received a project. The project is to build a house. The, our project is to build a house. Now, we will not randomly start off with any activity of our choice, isn't it? We will not say, okay, let's do the flooring work first or let's go do the painting work first even before constructing the house. No. So, if we have to build a house, then we need to perform the activities, the tasks in a proper sequence. So, maybe lay down the foundation first. After that, after the foundation is laid down, then we will uh, work on, uh, um, you know, building the walls. Uh, then once the walls are set up, then maybe the roof, then fixing the doors and windows, then, uh, uh, you know, the, the plumbing work, the electric work, the flooring work, the painting work, they will happen in a sequence. So for any project, list of activities should be there. And again, when should each of those activities start and when should they end? That timeline also should be given. Otherwise, people might take, take their own sweet time to complete each task. right? So what is the task? When should it start? By when is it supposed to end? What is the duration given to it? All this should be given. Okay. And when we have such data, and if that data is to be represented graphically, we create a Gantt chart. So it is a list of events against a timeline showing the exact date when that, when that event is supposed to happen and sized by the duration. So design is taking the longest time. Okay, you like to look at the length of the bar like this. Again, these events are supposed to be sorted properly. First, we will do request evaluation. Then we will gather the requirements from the client. Then we will prepare the design. Then we'll do the build work. If there is any rework, we will do that and send out the final deliverable. So like this, step by step. Step by step, what are the activities to be performed? When should each activity start? How much is the duration given to it? And by when is it supposed to end? Okay, by when is it supposed to end? Like that, if we indicate, it is called as a Gantt chart. <clears throat> okay, so Gantt is a list of events against a timeline, clearly indicating when it should start. So this side of the GAN bar is basically the start date. The size of the bar is the duration. This is by when is it supposed to end. Then here it will start duration end date. Here it will start duration end date. This is, these two are running in parallel. During this period, these two are running in parallel. Okay. So that is how we create a GAN chart.
and it is used when we have to show the performance over a period, uh, the list of activities to be performed over a period of time in what sequence. Okay, next is pie chart. It is used for showing the shares, okay, or proportions or uh, for part to whole analysis. What is the contribution of each part together, coming together and making the whole. So when you have to show the shares, let's say there are different regions where the business is operating and across different regions, I want to see the profit. Okay, then I can simply select them, go to the show me panel and click on the pie chart. This will give me the pie chart. Okay, so what do we understand by looking at the pie chart? We can understand that central region's contribution, west region's contribution is the highest in the profit. Then we have east, I think south and then central. We can also label the slices. If we want, we can also show those as percentages, okay? while indicating the actual profit also. So this, this kind of a thing, this kind of a representation happens in a pie chart. So whose share is the highest in profit? West region's share in the profit is the highest. Then second comes East, third is South, and the least contribution in profit is that of Central region. Its contribution is about 14%, okay? Scatter plot, it is used to show the trend or relationship between two measures. Okay. Now suppose, uh, let's say I have data from a power plant where I know what is the power output at each windmill on with certain wind, wind speed. When the wind speed is so many meters per second, the power output generated is so much. When the wind speed is so and so meters per second, power generation is so and so megawatts. Okay. Now I need to check what is the relationship between the two. To check the relationship between the two per windmill, we'll create a scatter plot. So what do we understand by the scatter plot? This is wind speed forming the x-axis. This is the power output forming the y-axis. So as the wind speed increases, what do you think is happening to the power output? It is increasing, right? We can see there is the overall the data is going in an upward direction. Overall, this data is moving in an upward direction, which means as the wind speed increases, the power generation is also increasing. When the wind speed is less, power generation is less. When the wind speed is high, like 18 meters per second, 16 meters per second, the power generation is also high, almost 30 megawatts it is reaching. So to understand the correlation between two variables, we create a scatter plot. Area chart. It is also like a line chart. It is used to show the performance over a period of time, but we stack the areas one on top of the other. So we take the performance of each one and stack it one on top of the other. So let's say across different quarters, okay, I want to see the sales of this business. So quarterly sales, we can see here. Now, if I break it down by region, what will happen? You can see the lines for each region. Central region's performance, you can see. East region's performance can be seen there. South, and we can see west. How are they performing? Okay. Now imagine, it's all like this, no? Imagine rather than doing this, if we can take central, and then from there on, if we can on top of that, show the east region. Okay. That is basically an area chart like that it will come. It will stack the performances one on top of the other. Okay. So we can see West region on top of that. The red part is all the contribution of South. So red is not dominating much because it's very little sales happening there. This light blue and orange are dominating. Means West area chart with stacked area. Dual axis graph. This is also used when you have to show the performance of two different measures against each other. Okay, when you're comparing two different measures performance against each other. So <clears throat> let's say across different regions, I want to check what is the profit made by the business. And I would like to check what is the sales also. Now, when I go and use the concept of dual axis, they both will get merged together. And Tableau automatically changes everything. You can see it has made them circles. 
So I'll go back to all and make it a bar. We'll keep profit as a line. Okay, we will keep profit as a line. We will leave sales as a bar. And we'll bring the red colored line indicating profit forward. Let's change the color. Blue I will use for profit. Okay. So this is the sales, the bars are indicating the sales and the line is indicating the profit. Two different measures we are able to show in one single graph. The two with two different mark types. For one, we are using a bar. For the other, we are using a line. Bars are indicating the sales performance. Lines are, line is indicating the profit. Okay. Now we can even go ahead, synchronize the axis. See. The bar and the line, they are all ending at the same point here. Does it mean sales and profit are equal? No, right? Sales and profit is not equal. Why is it that line and the tip of the bar are both almost in the same place? Because the range of values on the axis is not the same. The axis are not synchronized. So when you synchronize, then the comparison becomes apt. Look at that now. Okay, what is sales and where is the profit with respect to sales is what we are getting. That is dual axis. Okay. Next is a bubble chart. This is also for comparison only, like you create a bar graph. Bubble chart can also be used to simply compare the performance of the measures. So let's see across different subcategories. I would like to check the sales. So I can simply go and click here and make a bubble chart out of it. So how many bubbles will be there will depend on how many members are there in that field. Okay, each field, uh, sub, under the subcategory field, there are 17 members. So we will get 17 bubbles. And the size of the bubble is indicating the sales. So bigger the bubble, higher the sales, smaller means less sales is happening over there. Like that. So for comparison only, okay, just for comparison. Finally, histogram. It is used to show the frequency distribution of overall range when you take and when you break it into smaller intervals, we get a histogram. Like for example, let's say I want to check the distribution of discount and I'll create a histogram. Look at that. Format this and I will show it as a percentage okay discount i'm going to show it as a percentage so most of the discounts that we are offering are are in the range of zero to up to like bin of let me change the bin bin is how we are breaking it into intervals okay let's take point one, ten, ten percent most of the discounts we are offering are in the range of zero to ten percent and then 20 to 30 percent very few discounts in the range of 10 to 20 and lesser discounts in this range. So you can see few transactions with more than 80% discount. Nothing here. Okay. So we're taking the entire discount range or uh, entire amount of discounts which the business has offered and we are seeing how much discount under each bin. How many transactions under each bin. Okay, so uh, most of the transactions were done either without offering any discount, 0% or maximum up to, you can say precisely 9%. 10 to 19%, very few transactions. But 20% discount is offered a lot, 20 to 29. 30 and above, the discount offered on the transactions is less. Very few transactions where we have given high discounts. This way you can understand or conclude. Distribution analysis, breaking the data into smaller buckets and then checking how many values are there under each bucket. Okay, so with that, we come to the end of charts. You know, this was just like uh, to demonstrate how the charts are created. Okay, if you enroll for the actual training, then the concept of each chart will be taught and then only the charts will be, you know, we show the charts. We, like for example, histogram. Then the entire concept of what is a histogram, when should it be created, what does it indicate, that itself will take about half an hour. And then the creation and what ways you can enhance. So histogram alone is a one hour concept in the regular training. Scatter plots alone will take another one hour. Okay, so here it was more like just demonstrating the capabilities of Tableau by showing you all the graphs. 
So I hope you got the idea that a lot of things can be done in Tableau. A variety of charts can be created. Thank you all so much for attending the webinar.